Growing grass for fuel is the purpose of current research being conducted by the University of Georgia. Monitor's Mark Wauman visited with one scientist who is experimenting with various types of grasses that one day may provide a renewable fuel source for the United States. Here's the story. In this field of tall grasses in southeast Georgia, UGA agronomist Dewey Lee sees big potential. The purpose of this study at the Southeast Georgia Research and Education Center is focusing on which grass would provide the most fuel source at the lowest cost for farmers to grow. What we're trying to do is look at the different types of feedstocks or products that we might could use in converting uh, to some form of energy. You know? So creating biomass to convert that to some form of energy. Well, that energy might be in the form of combustion, like with coal. Uh, producing ethanol like they produce corn, uh, from corn, and uh, or pyrolysis or gasification, two sort of terms that mean that we can you know, do a thermal conversion, thermochemical conversion. He has been conducting this study for several years now, and he is starting to get an idea which varieties are performing better. What we're finding with uh, ethanol is we can produce about one and a half percent of ethanol uh, per kilogram, and uh, well, that's 2.2 pounds. Uh, and and the, the grasses are roughly the same. But with combustion, we want something that's going to look, be a little bit drier at, at the harvest time, which is going to be the switchgrass or napier, I mean switchgrass or uh, Bermuda grass or with, uh, switch, uh, with miscanthus. And then if we're going to some other conversion, I think the higher tonnage napier grass and energy cane is going to actually be better. The information gathered here could be invaluable for farmers as well as for other citizens in Georgia. What we're beginning to see is that under lower inputs, lower managements, now these are managed manage fields that have uh, moderate levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, things like that, uh, that we're, we are obtaining 15 to 18 tons of dry matter with some of these subtropical grasses like napier grass and energy cane, uh, with a native uh, American grass uh, such as switchgrass, uh, six to eight tons and then with miscanthus on these lower managements, two to three tons. If energy grasses can be grown on farms around the state, then farmers can diversify and citizens will benefit from an alternate fuel source. The research may conclude one thing, but unless there is an infrastructure to handle and manufacture the fuel, all of this energy potential will just rot in the fields. Dewey is excited about the future of energy grasses and believes they may be a part of a diversified farm in the near future. We will be absolutely on the ground running when, when somebody, company or some entity brings the technology, the conversion technology commercially. When that happens, we, we will definitely be ready. So if someone were to announce that today of a breakthrough in conversion technology, um, we could have them uh, the type of feedstock that they would need to run that plant. For the Georgia Farm Monitor, I'm Mark Wildman.